trash in is also trash out for AI models, especially computer vision models. So in this video here, we're going to cover like the importance of high quality computer vision data sets, how important it is to focus on the data. If you're not getting good results with the models, it's most likely not the models, but to act like data set, we can do a ton of different things to improve our data set, but it's really important that we focus on it and make sure that we train it on the best data. So it doesn't really matter what type of problem, edge case, use case, and so on that you're trying to solve. It all comes down to the data. The models act like don't need too much data. You'll probably play around with the autolytics model, trained update detection models, the YOLO 11, instant segmentation, and so on. You can act like solve a very simple use case with just a few hundred images. We don't need thousands or tens of thousands of images just to, to be able to solve a use case or a specific business problem. It's more about like having high quality data. So in this video here, we're gonna talk about like both the role of data in computer vision, how you can clean it, what you need to take into account, and also the important steps, because it's really important that we have the correct structure, how we train the model, the data set structure as well, because we both need a training, validation, and also test split. And if you don't have that, you might run into problems when you take your models from your development environment and put it out in the real world, because there's actually like a huge difference from running your models in the real world and also in a local environment on your own computer. So when we're training computer vision models, we have different types of data set, as I just mentioned. We have a training set, validation set, and also test set. Here we can see basically just how we will split the data set. First of all, we have our full data set, then we have a training set, and we also have a test set on the sideline. We can also have like our training set, validation set, and test set. The difference is basically just the training set is what we're training to act like model on. Then we have a validation set, which is what we're validating a model on after training. So the model will never see, it will never learn anything from the validation set. So when we use our validation set, we actually just make sure that our model generalizes well. Could be that we have like different edge cases, use cases and so on, but it also depends on the environment that you have. So let's take an example with self-driving cars. It's a very good analogy. So if you just have a very big training set with just Tesla cars, you're training models specifically to drive those cars. You can't just take that specific data set or that specific model that has been trained on that data set and put it into other cars. But if we take more environments, different types of cars and so on, and start to train our models on that, have more variation in our data set, diversity in our data set, cover more edge cases, different environments, the models will start to generalize more. So this is also a very important factor to take into account. We both need high quality labeling. Could also be that your labeling or data set is off the annotations. So if you want to detect like persons walking around and the bounding boxes are not perfectly annotated on top of that person, could be that it covers different use cases, could be that multiple people are working on the same project with the same data and they're labeling in different ways. All these things here, they're basically just accumulating, they're causing errors in the model performance and also output at the end. So if you just feed it like any bad stuff in the input, it's also going to affect the output. So as I mentioned in the intro, trash in is also trash out. It's way more important to focus on the act like data set, getting enough data, getting the best data possible, high quality data that we feed into the models compared to like figuring out what model to use. It doesn't really matter if you're using the nano small 11 model, V8 model, or whatever model that you're using, it's way more about data. So if you're spending a lot of time like trying to just test out different models, it doesn't really get good performance and so on, you might want to take a step back, go back to the basics, like first principles, start, where is it actually like starting? We start with the data. So that's very important. And then we have our validation set, we validate our model on top of that. Then we can do fine tuning to our model, try to increase the accuracies and all that, high parameter tuning, could be that we change some st stuff in our models, could also just be like our optimizer, learning rate and so on, and then we have a separate test set. The test set, we will never want to do any tuning, high parameter tuning and so on on our test set, because we need to make sure that our model generalizes well and we can put it out there in the real world after and not just have like a fixed training environment. Let's say that we just have one big data set, we just train on that specific one. Then once we put it into the real world, the data is not the same, it's different. We have data shift over time and so on. So it won't generalize. We will just overfit to our training set. So this is the exact same as I mentioned with the Tesla cars earlier on. So here we can also see 
top five traits of high quality computer vision data sets. So we need to have good accuracy data. It should reflect the real world situations as I've already covered. We should have diversity, cover different edge cases, different environments and so on. And also consistency in our labels, in our annotations. We need to be consistent both with the format and also the standards that we are using. Timeliness here as well. So again, real world environments, they can change lighting conditions, environments like day and night could be pretty much a lot of different things that can go in and change over time. And then also privacy. So if you have any like sensitive information and so on, we also need to take that into account. So we pretty much covered all these traits here while I was explaining the whole data set structure and also just the importance of the quality. Because if we have low quality data, we might underfit on our data. That means our model doesn't really learn from our data. It's not good enough to solve the use case and the problem that we're trying to solve. Then we have our optimum here, which is basically just a trade-off between like underfit and overfit. So it's right in the middle. We have low training error and also low test error. That means our model, it generalizes well. It doesn't overfit. When we're overfitting, it, it is basically just because we have low training error, but we, when we actually put a model out there, we test our model, we have very high error because we're basically just training a very specific model just to solve this data. That could be that we're training for too long, could be that we have a very specific data set. Let's say that we have like just one video, we just sample images from that video and we label 100 images, only train our model on that and we take a completely other video then we will have very high error on the second video compared to the first one because we basically just only trained on that specific case. So this is the difference between underfit, overfit, and we want to be inside the middle where our model it generalizes well and we have low testing error and also low training error. So you might be wondering now if you're getting into computer vision and all that, haven't been playing around with it too much, how do I actually like split in? How much data do I need for validation, testing and so on? And I hear this a lot, but a pretty general rule is to have like 70% of your data for training, validation 15% and also 15% for testing. Depending on the size of your data set, the edge case you want to solve, the scale of the data set, also the complexity of the solution, and the use case that you're trying to solve, it could vary. Sometimes you might have like less testing. Sometimes you actually like want to have more testing as well because you want to make sure that your model really generalizes to the use case that you're trying to solve. So this is a pretty good indication. Just start with this as default. You can always play around with it, but you're good to go. Could also be that you, for some reason, don't have a lot of training data available. Then you might go for more training data less testing data or like less validation data as well and it will probably be hard to go in and make fine tune then it might be hard to go in and fine tune the high parameters and so on but, but there could be cases where you just don't have more data available and you just have to get it to work with whatever you had so this is pretty much the most important things to take into account when we're talking about data sets. So we have our data set split, the quality of our data set, need to make sure that we have our annotations good, trash in is trash out, we need to focus on it because I think most people, they just focus on like fine tuning the models, trying to get good results, like test out different models and so on, where it is act like the data. Sometimes it's better to just like take one step backwards, rethink it and also just make sure that you validate that you have good data. So this is really important. Make sure that you take it out and make sure that you understand these different terms and so on. We have videos covering the whole pipeline, each individual element, explaining it in more details, but also how you can do it in a practical example, both in a Google Cola notebook, how you can take your data set, throw it in, train a model, export it, and act like set up a whole computer vision pipeline. So definitely check that out. And then I'll just see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.